Yo, I'm gonna be straight up. I am making this intro right here strictly for retention before we get into the actual video, right? I gotta keep you on this thing. So, since you clicked it, do me a quick favor before you watch this 20 minutes of content. Hit the like button, subscribe, and comment something. It could be anything. Say, I don't know, I rock with DJ T Stop. Comment something before we get into the video. Before you get into it, this is a very important conversation in this video. I break down why I don't think those streaming sites are coming back. A very important conversation was brought up in the music game today by Sunny Digital. And I basically just give my thoughts on it. You know, you get some history about why the mixtape sites aren't around anymore. You, you get some lore about what hip hop was like before streaming. You get some game on how to make it as an artist. And it's just a great video all around. Just, uh, all right, here you go, go watch it now. Now this conversation started off today with Sunny Digital. Now Sunny Digital took to Twitter and he replied to a video that's been going viral all day. And this is a video from Ebro and it's Ebro feels like there's too many artists dropping music nowadays, right? And this just kind of feeds into a conversation that everybody's been having recently. And that's that it feels like music just comes and goes. It doesn't matter what the artist is, if it's Drake, uh, Future, Tyga, Yeet, you know, it feels like everybody just drops their album. It's hot for a week and then we just never hear about it again. Right. That is a common conversation. Whereas if we went back to, you know, 2018, we look at an album like 21 mixtape, really 21 Savage is Savage Mode. That was a mixtape of the summer. You know, the Ray Schremert albums, you know, uh, Astroworld. These are all albums that when they came out, they were, it felt like they were a rotation for years you know we it feels like we haven't had those types of albums in a long time right so sunny digital kind of he kicks off that conversation you know he replies to that ebro video and he goes i agree with this there's too many artists dropping music nowadays but i have a solution let's bring back mixtape platforms dat piff live mixtapes live mixtape pays out for streams on their site so that means you could still get paid also, doing this would actually give new artists a better chance at being discovered and seen because they won't be competing with major artists on streaming services when they drop songs. Everybody dropping on Spotify and Apple Music, which is essentially the NBA of the music industry when realistically, some of y'all should be dropping on mixtape sites, which is essentially the G League of the music industry. Furthermore, to enforce this, major streaming platforms should, should put some kind of standard to who can upload their major platform, for example, you would have had to drop at least three mixtape before you would be able to upload your album to streaming sites. That's just an example for your information. Bottom line, if all the people who think that they should be in the NBA could be in the NBA by their choice, it simply wouldn't be NBA anymore. It would just become a basketball court filled with professionals and people who think they are professionals. Just like everybody can't walk onto a major league sports field and claim they sport, it should be like that with with music, particularly when you upload to the major leagues, Spotify and Apple. Sonny, it sounds like a good idea, right? Hey, let's make the main streaming sites for actual quality music. You know, we got to filter out who can really drop on there. And then if you're a new up and coming artist, you can drop on the mixtape sites. And if you do well on the mixtape sites, you know, you could have the ability to drop on Spotify and whatnot, right? In very basic terms, this looks like a fantastic idea, right? But I think this is really bad for the consumer and up and coming artists. I think the only person that really benefits from this really is the mainstream artists, right? Now, I think we have to kick off the conversation right here. He says, bring back the mixtape platforms, Dat Piff and live mixtapes, right? Those were the main uh, two. There was also my mixtapes and there's one other one that I feel like I'm forgetting. Uh, regardless though, we have to look at why did these mixtape sites fail, right? We all grew up with them. Maybe if you were a little too young, you don't remember them, but let's look at why those sites failed. The first reason is those sites had no algorithm, right? Part of the reason that SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Apple music are all popping is because they have an algorithm to feed you the music they want you to hear. Remember. The goal of all these apps and websites is to keep you on them, right? Say I go on SoundCloud and I start streaming the new future mixtape, right? Once I finish the mixtape, it's going to either recommend me new future music or other artists that future fans tend to enjoy, right? 
and it caters this to try to keep me on the app and keep me listening to music that I like. You know, it has the algorithm. That's why so many SoundCloud artists grew up, um, blew up in like 2015, 16, 17 was you had the SoundCloud algorithm that everybody said that was goaded at the time. I think the YouTube algorithm has gotten a lot better and has eclipsed everything SoundCloud had going on, but that's besides the point, right? That Piff and all those other websites, they didn't have that. There wasn't a real sense of artist discovery. The only way you could get dis discovered as an artist was get on, you know, pay to get on the homepage. Or I don't remember if you could pay, maybe it was like under the table, but really if you're, if I dropped a mixtape, right? The only way people would know that I dropped it was either they know me personally and I send them to that Piff and they type my name in the search bar, or I just happen to be on the front page, you know? You're not going to go on that piff, click on Lil Wayne's mixtape, and then my mixtape randomly starts playing afterwards. There was no algorithm to do that. Secondly, the technology changed, right? MP3 files are useless to the average consumer. So remember, what was great about those sites was they did have an embedded like MP3 player thing, but the bulk of the users would go, click download, and they would download MP3 files that you would play off your laptop, you would put it on your phone, you would put it on your MP3 player. MP3s, you know, were how things worked. That isn't really the case anymore, right? People don't want MP3s. If you have an iPhone, you already know how annoying it is trying to download anything other than a picture. Anything other than a JPEG or a PNG is trying to deal with that on an iPhone is horrible, right? And everybody plays things out of Spotify and all of those apps, right? Which aren't the most friendly apps when you're trying to load your own music into them. Not to mention, if you switch devices, you lose all those tracks, right? So MP3s are essentially useless, right? The next thing is they don't have those embed features. You know, part of the reason that SoundCloud and AudioMac blew up was if I have a tweet or a, a blog site, you know, you could embed the track into the site and you know people could click play from your website and you know they would, it would, the artist would make money from it because uh you know it was monetized a little ad would play you know it had a really really good embed feature that piff and live mixtapes never really had that another thing is they had no more money for exclusives so remember uh live mixtapes and dat piff they used to pay the pop and artists to drop mixtapes exclusively on their website i believe dj drama who is one of the the biggest djs of all time said that he was making like 70 grand a month from mixtape sites at one point but they would pay artists to drop exclusives you know like tyga had his well done series wayne had countless you know uh no ceilings um you know gucci main had a lot meek mill had dream chasers etc etc so those sites would you know pay for the artists like hey you're gonna drop your mixtape here's 50 grand drop it on my site right and that piff, they would make money back through the ads, right? They, those sites were littered with ads. Um, you know, there would be video ads, ads you could click, etc. But as time went on, they didn't really have a lot of money to throw to exclusives to dr bring people to the website anymore. And lastly, there was no monetization. Once again, there was no monetization, meaning when you posted your music, unless they paid you to post it there, you didn't make any money from it. It didn't matter if you went Dat Piff Diamond or Dat Piff Gold or whatever little reward trophy they gave you, you wouldn't make any money. Now, this actually was a problem that Waka Flocka pointed out back in 2018, right? So back in 2018, Waka Flocka put all of his mixtapes on SoundCloud in hopes of profiting from his streaming numbers. All was well until Dat Piff's vice president, Kyle Riley, everybody knows him as KP Dat Piff, tweeted at Waka insinuating that he was a sellout for doing so. This enraged Waka who called out Riley and accused the site of exploiting artists, labeling them culture vultures, right? Why you, once again, Waka Flocka, he dropped countless <laughs> mixtapes on there. Not as many as Gucci, but Waka was another artist who was definitely a, a quantity guy when it came with projects, right? And he pointed out like, hey, I didn't make any money from this, right? Now, after Sonny Digital put out his big tweet, he started tweeting more and replying to everybody who had something to say about it, right? Now, the first person said, never gonna happen, bro. People wanna drop their music where they are going to be listened to. This is extremely valid and I haven't really seen a good counter to this anyway. Sonny said, well, people ain't getting streams anyway though, right? 
But here's the thing. If you're posting your music on Spotify and it's not doing numbers, going on live mixtapes, I promise you, is not going to do anything. It, it, There's no way. If you're not getting views on Spotify where there's an algorithm, there's playlisting, there's tools you could use to get on and people actually use it, ain't no point posting it on those mixtape sites, right? Next up, someone says, you're trying to gatekeep the platform, but what should have been prevented years ago was the mass migration required to lock in to stream music on the web. We should be allowed to embed the stream and music without requiring an account, right? Now, this person has a valid point. Basically, they're saying, hey, you know, the music industry should have kept everything very accessible. You shouldn't need an account to watch it or listen to the music. And the truth is you don't. YouTube, SoundCloud, you can use those pretty freely without any sort of subscription model, right? Next up, uh, Sunny Digital pointed out that live mixtapes uh pays out 13 million for a million streams while spotify pays out 4 million for a million streams i think it's clear where some of y'all should be dropping your music uh, it's not that cut and dry yes live mixtapes pays out 13 million for a million streams which is nine million dollars more than spotify will pay you out but one thing's for sure two things for certain Good luck getting a million streams on live mixtapes, even if you're an established artist, right? There are very little tools and discoverability to help you get there, right? Because, you know, say I'm a poppin' underground artist who I post a, a song on Spotify, right? Of course, you know, the initial uh, consumers are going to be my fans that I already have, right? They're going to start streaming this track, but the Spotify algorithm will see that that track's doing really well and it'll put it on the algorithm playlist for this. It'll put it on, you know, it'll recommend the track more. Like it'll help the track grow organically, right? Live mixtapes and those websites, as we mentioned in the beginning, those websites don't have any sort of algorithm to help you if you're trying to get on. And yes, live mixtapes does pay more, but that's because their royalty pool is significantly less diluted than Spotify's is, right? You know, Spotify, the pie gets has to get split significantly more ways than it does on live mixtapes, right? Now, what I do think would really help artists is if they try to fix the dilution of the royalty pool, right? I think a very, very obvious, well, there's two very obvious things we could do, right? One, try to negotiate a better split on the artist's behalf, right? Maybe even if it's just five, 10%, that'll go a long way, right? Secondly, you know, instead of stopping people from uploading on those streaming platforms, make it a barrier to monetization on those streaming platforms, right? For example, in the YouTube partner program, you have to have 4,000 watch hours, 1,000 subscribers. Maybe Spotify could do something similar. Maybe Spotify can say, you know, you have to have 100,000 organic, you know, authentic streams, right? Maybe they could say you have to have 50 followers, something like that you know, dilute the royalty pool. For example, on audio Mac, you have to have 25 followers, right? I think you would be doing a lot more service to the artist if you take that approach versus saying, everybody go to the G League site, right? Now, someone said, I understand what you're saying and I like the concept, but wasn't SoundCloud supposed to be the G League platform where newest artists could post music? But yeah, bring back live mixtapes and dat piff. Sunny says, yes and no, live mixtapes and Dat Piff were more game changers than SoundCloud. SoundCloud was like the whitewashed version. Uh, uh, SoundCloud and AudioMac, I would say, are far superior to those mixtape websites, right? Because let's be real, there's, uh, there's multiple reasons, but let's be real. Let's just look at content. Let's not even talk about algorithms or, you know, usability, anything like that. Let's just talk about content. SoundCloud have an audio Mac have all of those mixtapes from Dat Piff, live mixtapes, my mixtapes, and then more because Dat Piff and those sites for the most part around 2016, 17 ish artists just stop posting on there, right? All of the music on there is dated, right? Once again, they have a better interface, right? If you went on Dat Piff or live mixtapes, you'll see how like clunky and terrible those websites are in terms of the actual design they're not friendly especially on mobile and then lastly live mixtapes just recently started paying out 
that piff never really paid out. I don't know about my mixtapes, but monetization was never really a thing on those websites, right? And, you know, since live mixtapes keep spreading, getting brought up, let's take a look at live mixtapes in 2024, right? All right, this looks just like how it looked back in 2011, 12, when I was a kid looking at this website, right? Once again, we're trying to push this as a future, but what are the mixtapes on the cover? Uh, Let's scroll up. Okay, it says since 2006, get it live. Let's see, uh, they're premiering a Young Dread Dread mixtape. Young Dread, great up and coming artist. He's from the Tampa Bay area, shout out him. All right, we have the trending mixtapes. These are a bunch of DJ hosted mixtapes. We all remember back when DJs hosted mixtapes, man. Now I'm not gonna click on any of these tapes for copyright reasons, but we all know what these mixtapes are. These are gonna be mixtapes here. Uh, they're gonna have a bunch of tracks that we already know you know, all right, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of songs from Culture 3 and whatnot, and probably Quavo's Chris Brown diss and whatnot, but it's going to have a bunch of DJ tags on it, and it's going to have a bunch of sound effects, right? If you've been on the mixtape sites in the past, you know what I'm saying is true. Let's look at the featured mixtapes. Okay, these are a bunch of artists I don't know. I assume these are up and coming artists. And let's look at the world premiere mixtapes. These are... All right, I see some notable names here. Yo Gotti, Joel Santana, Lil Wayne, Future, Future. But do you guys know how old these tapes are? 56 Nights. I'm pretty sure that came out in like 2015. True Story was like a 2013 mixtape. No Ceilings 2. This is another dated, dated mixtape. God willing, Joel Santana, old tape. Yo Gotti The Return. This came out in 2015. All of these tapes, the newest tape here is like nine years old. You know what I mean? Let's look at the top artist searches. Lil Wayne, Gucci Mane, Future, Young Jeezy, and Young Dolph. Rest in peace, Young Dolph, right? These are all great established artists, but let these are the new hot artists. These are the artists that were scorching hot back when this website was scorching hot, right? So as you can see, this site needs a lot of work before it's seen as a viable option, right? Now the next tweet here says, um, does SoundCloud, Audio Mac, or Untitled not work or something? And he said, not like the mixtape sites at all. Let's be for real, y'all. Or maybe y'all wasn't around during them times. Then Sonny goes, we can't see this tweet anymore. It looks like the person deleted it. I assume they were probably saying like, oh, just pay for Apple or Spotify. Sonny goes, the average person working regular jobs ain't got no money for Apple Music and Spotify every month. Do or don't, it doesn't really matter. SoundCloud, YouTube, and Audio Mac are free, and Spotify has a free tier. So all those sites are still ultra accessible. Now, another thing that I think is very interesting is that the live mixtapes, uh, one of their big business people around this time last year actually went and did an interview on Say Cheese TV. As we know, the owners of these mixtape sites aren't so not self-aware to where they know the mixtape sites aren't really in a good position in the culture, right? You know, they're just not relevant anymore. Objectively, they're not relevant, right? So they actually, one of the uh, head guys from live mixtapes goes on Say Cheese TV, right? And Sean Cotton basically kind of asked them like, hey, what is the future of these platforms gonna be? And his answer was very disappointing. It's funny. It's funny you say that because today I tweeted and I said, damn, I want, I would like to see NBA Youngboy rap on old school beats or old classic beats and just put it out as a mixtape. And that's like a lost art. You don't really see the popping rappers, you know, do mixtapes anymore. How do you feel about like, what do you have to say to a, a lot of artists now? Because they think that app, like you said, the DSPs, they think that's it. They don't, everything now is based off money. They don't want to just put music out there no more and build that leverage to get where they want to go. So I was going to save this part for like, I guess what's, what's coming, but I'll just kind of get into it right now. It's, it's back and, and the culture is back. Meaning we changed the game again. Live mixtapes changed the game again. We pivoted from being a mixtape platform to the first ever streaming and distribution platform. Mm. There are other streaming and distribution companies out there, but not a platform like us, where we've got the built-in traffic, 
and we're gonna focus it, like we've always done, on hip hop and rap music, R&B, right? So now these campaigns are gonna get back to being built because now we're paying you out on the streams. Yeah. We're gonna handle your distribution. It's the same terms as a normal distribution agreement. We're gonna put it out and the best part, I'll catch you on this one, we're gonna pay out the highest in the industry and you still get paid from Apple, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube and wherever else. Now you're gonna- Now that was basically his pitch and that was a pretty disappointing pitch. He basically said, hey, our only redeemable factor into why consumers should come check us out is we're going to pay artists. Guess what? All of these other sites have been paying artists for 10 plus years. Paying artists is not going to make the consumer want to come to your website, right? Now, let's see the next tweet. Someone says, while this may be true, bro, but how many people still using live mixtapes? Very honest concern. We've been talking about the the music base, you know, the people listening to the music on these sites for a while, like how much, what is the user base like, right? He said, it's a million users on there, but honestly, all the users on Spotify just go to all the big artists. So it's more users on Spotify, but less artists. Uh, the streams are getting spread across. Yes, but once again, this is a very misleading number, right? First, I want to know, is this a million active users? And is this a million active users a month? Like I need more details on this million users, right? Is this a million users a day? It, it, I mean, is this a million accounts signed up on the website? Because just because there's a million accounts, that doesn't mean there's a million users, right? Now, if I was to guess, I don't have the official data, but if I was to guess, the bulk of the people that are going to live mixtapes are doing as I showed you. They're just going here for nostalgia purposes, because they want to download old mixtapes from artists they grew up with, like Lil Wayne, Gucci Mane, Future, Young Jeezy, and Young Dolph, right? They're not there to find new music, right? They're not gonna go in live mixtapes and try to find a new artist. Let's let's see if they have Yeet. Oh, uh, okay, uh, they do have Yeet. But what percentage? Let's see, uh, 125 likes. Yeet only did 12,000 views on here, right? And that's Yeet. That is probably one of the top five quote unquote new artists in hip hop and he did 12,000 views and afterlife this project to my knowledge has been out for uh six months to a year maybe let's see came out in february 2023 you know we're we're in 2024 now um so this project is not new and it's only done 12,000 views imagine what any other artist is going to do right now, Sunny Digital has one more tweet that I think is important to look at. Sunny Digital, uh, someone says, realistically, who is going to the mixtape platforms to listen to people's music? The artists getting the most attention on these DSPs aren't even putting out anything of quality. It's honestly a blessing that we're able to upload to these sites. This take is crazy to me. And Sunny Digital said something that, once again, it sounds cool. I don't think it's the truth. He said if Future dropped his project th there, everyone would go. This isn't the case. First off, here's the main reason that why Future isn't going to drop his project there. He has no, there's no incentive to do it. First off, live mixtapes probably can't pay him enough money up front to make him do it, right? First off, when you're an artist and you know you're dropping your, your, your tracks, right? You drop tracks with the incentive of these tracks being hits. You want your music to get the most attention possible, right? Artists want their music to be seen. Anybody who says otherwise, I think is full of crap, but that's a whole nother conversation, right? If let's pretend Future dropped a song and 100, uh, 100 people would listen to it. If he dropped it everywhere, if he drops it on live mixtapes, maybe 15, 20%. It's just the casual music fan who finds music from these playlists and the radio and things like that. They're not going to live mixtapes.com for all of the reasons I've spent the last 15, 20 minutes going over, right? Secondly, if you don't believe me, what if I told you that these websites tried this in the streaming era? Back around COVID 2020, 2021, that piff tried to make a resurgence. What did they do? They teamed up with Lil Wayne and DJ Khaled and they did No Ceilings 3. No Ceilings 3, I would say it was an above average tape. It wasn't Wayne's best, but it was pretty good didn't make any noise in the industry. Why? Because it was only available on Dat Piff. Now they didn't just try it with Wayne and Khaled. 
they teamed up with Tyga and DJ Drama to drop another Well Done. Well Done is a classic mixtape series on the platform, and it did nothing. And as we know, Dat Piff actually shut down fairly recently. Clearly, these things didn't work. So I don't think Future would go do that. Now, I think that wraps up this conversation. And I rock with Sunny Digital Heavy. Now, a lot of people don't know Sunny Digital has been fighting hard for the artists out there. Um, he's tried preaching for the producer union. He hosts conversations like this. You know, he really sticks up with producers as somebody who's involved in the game. But yeah, man, I just don't see these mixtape sites coming back. And I'm somebody who I loved listening to those mixtape sites back when I was a kid, man. I loved them. 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 But I think that wraps it up for this video. It's been your boy, DJ T-Stomp. If you made it this far, you better hit that like button. You better subscribe and you better comment something, man. Because this was a very, very important video. And uh, I'm out. Peace.